This is a stock analysis blitz for Sentiment. Sentiment are a British gold miner listed on both the FTSE 250 and also the Toronto Stock Exchange. Before I start, please remember I do these videos just for fun as a hobby and always speak to a qualified financial advisor before making any investment decision. So we have Sentiment's reserves here and the Ivory Coast stuff, that's actually pre-final investment decision. But they have substantial reserves based in their Sakari gold mine in Egypt. I have here their latest life of mine plan. You can see that it's expecting to produce total amounts of gold of half a million ounces every year for the next decade. Here's an image of that mine from their annual report. And you can see that much of it is open pit. There's also some underground mining taking place as well. So what's really good about this stock is they have one mine, which is most of their assets. And we have quite a lot of confidence that it's a quite a solid asset here, producing stable amounts of revenues over a long period of time. It's worth noting the free cash flow which was very healthy in recent years, but then it just started to turn negative. And this is because they have been investing lately in the future life of this Sakari gold mine, as well as developing new exploration, particularly in the Ivory Coast, but also in Egypt. We've got here their exploration licenses in Egypt. So they are going to be having to spend some money on future exploration and in, in growing their reserves and resources in the future. We have here the all-in sustaining cash cost, uh, which reduced actually from 2022 to 2023. And that was mostly because of the drop in the price of diesel. But when we compare it to the gold price that they achieved each year, it's a bit of a thin margin here compared with other mining stocks I've looked at. But then having said that, it does look quite good now we get to 2023. We do see some susceptibility to increases in oil price. But they've actually just recently built a load of solar panels, which should solve 20% of their energy issues. And they're actually also uh, going to connect to the Egyptian grid, which again should produce cheaper energy. But they have quite a wide guidance here of AISC, but they seem to be doing the right things, given those tangible facts there of them actually connecting to the grid and using the solar panels. When I look at their net assets versus their market cap, they have a price to book of about one. So you look quite well valued straight off the bat there. But then when you look at the reserves, then and the reserves and resources, then they really do look shockingly undervalued. Now to get the value of their resources and the value of their reserves, I took their average realized gold price and then took away the AISC to get a margin, which I multiplied by their amount of gold that they have in their resources and reserves. And we see that actually it jumped up massively in uh, from 2022 to 2023. Um, the black line here would be the 2022 number and you can see a substantial increase. Now, a lot of that is because of this uh, shift down in the AISC number. But then also they added the Doropo project in the Ivory Coast, which made quite a big difference as well for their reserves, which I wouldn't want to count because that's pre-definitive feasibility study, which was promised in 23, but is now late and expected in the first half of 2024. So we see that they're actually focusing a lot on the Ivory Coast here for expansion of their resources uh, more than the um, Egyptian exploration. Um, I wouldn't want to include that now actually in their, their numbers perhaps, uh, but it's obviously a mixture of that 
plus the uh, differential between the gold price and the AIC, which has led to these absolutely uh, staggering increases in reserves and resources. But the kind of truth is somewhere in between. And um, the fact is, is that on paper, they do look quite staggeringly undervalued at the moment. So looking at the news flow, and we had a Sakuri exploration update in 2022 where they managed to um, get drilling data that helps substantiate uh, the data which they then used for this life of mine plan, which all looks very robust. Actually, had a project in Burkina Faso. Uh, called the Batty West Project, which they exited in 2022, which I think is a good idea. So in 2022, took on a 150 million credit facility. So they are having to invest in expansion. And so unfortunately, although they have no debt now, they are going to have to take a bit of financial strain in the next few years um, in order to grow resource update and then the uh, Nugras block made in drill results. So these came out only a matter of a few weeks ago and actually uh, I plotted the drill data and they did eight drills which were located in this uh, Nugras block and of them the uh, little Sakari and the Um Majal drills or areas uh, produced the best data and we can see they did find some good nuggets of gold here so it looks kind of promising at first glance if I was to do a full video then I'd have to be start comparing this to, to the drill results of some other companies I know uh, Greatland Gold for example to give us some idea of exactly how good these results are but it is certainly quite exciting, the idea that they'll be able to um, rather easily expand their operations in Egypt, in what is a completely undeveloped kind of territory. So if we compare the share price against the uh, price of gold, we see quite a nice differential here, uh, making, the, making the share price look quite appealing. And so, like I said before, um, actually their main focus is in the Ivory Coast. And myself, I'm not so keen on the Ivory Coast, but that seems to be where they're uh, putting all their money. Um, but then there is also uh, this exploration in Egypt. And then focusing in on the Egyptian, uh, this is where the Sakari mine is actually located at the moment. And they have this numerous block where they've got those good drill results from. The plan is to do some follow-up drilling, 15,000 metres worth, in by the end of 2024. They've also got this Umrus block and also the Narj block. And both of those, they're actually currently doing geo-surveys and um, assaying soil samples. And it's possible they may do some drilling in 2024 for those. So the actual um, Egyptian exploration kind of interests me more than the Ivory Coast stuff. And uh, it does give us some exciting possible upside on top of it, what is actually uh, quite a good company with good assets within their own right, you know, without, even without these uh, extra potential here. In terms of Egypt, though, um, it's got Sudan to the south, Libya to the west, and of course the uh, Gaza conflict just over the border here. Uh, so it's not in a particularly safe part of the world, uh, but where the actual mine and uh, mining concessions are located, is actually just look kind of tucked out of the way a bit. Um, so that's kind of good, the location. 
I discovered this website, theglobaleconomy.com, and this does actually provide good data on the political stability of particular countries. And for Ivory Coast, it's actually not so bad. Um, they've got a a nice improving trend and not so bad a score actually. You know, it's not it's a kind of um, kind of unstable, but not bad at all compared with a lot of other countries. Then to my surprise, when I looked at Egypt, um, Egypt had a worse score than Ivory Coast. And actually, when we go and look at the uh, inflation rate in Egypt, we find that it's about 33%. So that's fairly horrendous. And um, then when you look at the yield curve for Egypt, they've actually got interest rates of about 28% or over 27%. And you can see that the yield curve has jumped up from where it was uh, six months ago to now, it's just recently looks absolutely horrific here with this nasty uh, flattened curve that runs about 28% through all the length of uh, all the maturities. So I did a little bit of research and it seems that actually People were saying that the Egyptian government was in crisis even like six months ago with um, massive economic instability. A lot of the Egyptian uh, revenues, a very you know, a ridiculous proportion of their total revenues comes from the Suez Canal, for ships uh, traversing the Suez Canal. And of course, uh, we've had the Houthi attacks and the uh, Suez Canal crisis and uh, you can see here how the uh, transit of ships through the Suez Canal has dropped apparently by about 40% um, and now ships are going around the Cape of Good Hope instead. What worries me is I think this will get resolved but what worries me is if the Egyptian government was already at the verge of collapse, according to, you know, lots of articles you can read from even six months ago, then it does worry me that this sudden loss of income could be like the straw that breaks the camel's back as far as the Egyptian government's concerned. So sadly, um, really against my kind of expectation, so I'd always kind of considered Egypt to be a bit of a safer country. Actually, there's a clear and present danger here of uh, political instability in Egypt, which really would kind of put me off investing in this company at the moment. I would kind of want to uh, wait to see that blow over, actually. Okay, so looking at the numbers and the uh, revenue trend is very good. You can see that actually roughly when the uh, gold price peaked. Now we know that the price of gold has um, had this beautiful uh, giant cup of hand, cup and handle. And um, in the uh, recent leg of that, we got like a high in 2020 and then we're back to a new high now. And so that's, of course, where we see the highest revenues. Um, there's also been an extra 100 million boost for 2023. As far as I can make out, um, actually, these numbers here are based on the interims, uh, which I then did an estimate for a full year. But then there's also a Q4 release, which unfortunately only gives snippets of data but little bits of data that it did provide. We've got little bits of data it did provide, I've uh, put in here. And so I took this uh, bullion on hand number they gave as the inventories, but that could be wrong. But if it's not wrong, then it kind of looks to me that like they actually uh, pushed out a lot of their bullion uh, in 2023, which kind of explains the 100 million extra boost to revenues. But even if you take away that extra 100 million, 
it's still really an excellent uh, set of results. The cost of sales were a bit high in 2022. And according to the report, that was mostly because of high diesel prices. And uh, that's reduced now in 2023. So there we see an explanation of why the uh, AIC costs look so bad in 2022. Um, it was because of higher diesel prices. And although they've given this uh, wide guidance here, hopefully by connecting to the Egyptian grid and also using 20% of their energy uh, by using solar panels, that will help with the um, AISC going forward. But yeah, overall, these are really good numbers, actually, in terms of their profit and loss statement. We can see a nice widening there between the income and expenditure. So, you know, excellent results, really. Um, and I'd say around 170 million uh, positive net income is the kind of norm. And that's just at current gold prices. We can see the build up of their property plant and equipment. Um, but it's all fairly stable, actually. There's not much put down to exploration and evaluation assets. You know, these projects are still at fairly early stage, actually, even the Ivory Coast one. So they've not been putting the money in yet. Their current assets all look very healthy, although it's notable that the amount of cash has started to dwindle. And that's as they've started investing more in the Securi sites and in these other explorations and on the Ivory Coast. The money is starting to dwindle a bit. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention they are paying around a 3% dividend at the moment. But when we look at their liabilities, and um, really there's not much in way of liabilities and there's no debt at all. So it's currently a pitch perfect set of books here uh, way, way better than any of the other gold companies I've looked at. These are absolutely astounding numbers, I have to say. Um, and they've got no debt. The only problem is um, we know that they've just uh, created this 150 million revolving credit facility. So they are going to start, you know, this perfect, absolutely perfect set of accounts. Um, are going to start looking a little bit tarnished in the next few years as they start ramping up the um, development of their other opportunities. But really, an absolutely amazing set of books here. So, of course, this is the graphic uh, I like to use, and we see an amazing profile there, and um, they do look very cheaply valued uh, based on their net assets. Great to see no debt at the moment. When I look at the 2022 reserves, which is the, the black lines here, the kind of worst case, you know, that stacks up amazingly when you um, stack it up against the differential between the market cap and the net assets. Uh, they really do look very cheap at the moment. And we see uh, then when we look at the the reserves as of the 2023 raw numbers, absolutely incredibly cheap here. And then if the, if the gold price was to go up in the next few years, and that would be why you'd be investing in these as a speculative bet, obviously the leverage here and the, the potential, potential upside to the share price is enormous. So sentiment here look like the best gold company I've looked at as yet and on paper they look amazing it's just a real shame about this Suez crisis and the political instability in Egypt for me that this Suez crisis the sudden drop in revenues for the Egyptian government you know according to worldgovernmentbonds.com uh, the the yield curve is very concerning and apparently, the implied probability of default is 19%, which is an absolutely enormous number. 
uh, normally it's only supposed to be something like 0.5% or something. So in summary, on paper, Sentiment is the, the ultimate gold company you could possibly invest in. On paper, it looks like an absolute steal at current share price. Unfortunately, the, uh, the current Suez crisis would ward me off investing in them, though. I'd want to see that blow over and see the Egyptian government stabilize a bit before I myself would be willing to uh, take the plunge here, which is a great shame because on paper, it's the best thing I've seen in a long time. So I hope you found this useful and good luck with your own investments. I do videos like this one just for fun as a hobby. It's for entertainment purposes only. Always consult a qualified financial advisor before making any investment decision.